Alrighty, welcome to this episode. Today I got my laptop in front of me. It is already dark out, but the episode is just starting. Uh, you probably saw the title, so roll the intro. Um, so right now I'm going to show you how I would color correct a video, or I'm sorry, color correct a photo. If you didn't know, I'm colorblind. I can't see any blues besides sky blue, and I can't see any purples at all. So I have a photo here that I've never um, did any correction to. I just took the photo, uh, didn't think it was that good, so didn't want to use it for what I was using for the. Didn't think it was good for the purpose I was using it for, but I think it'll be fine for this little. Um, tutorial on how I do it so let's jump right into the laptop okay so the first thing I like to do is make sure my brightness is all the way up um, and now I'm looking at the photo uh, my biggest like thing that I do is I use a lot of presets that um, a lot of my friends who are not colorblind um, told me were good to use in certain scenarios um, I've memorized all of them and like what they told me was good about them and so that's kind of what I do if you want to know what I use it's down as down in the description below if you really want to know what I use they're all just Peter McKinnon um, presets that I kind of do some minor tweaks to as well so um, here we go so um, this is the photo the sky's a little blown out um, as you can see um, the buildings nice the, the the red and the the bricks over there is kind of nice that clay look and then there's a white car and some other colors in there so first thing I'll do I'm gonna go to my presets I go to my Peter McKinnon fall pack 2018 um, and then I just start looking um, for some stuff like trying to look at a style that I want um, one big thing that I do have to say um, When I'm when I'm editing these is like I've seen pictures in my mind that like I want to kind of emulate the the color correction of so I'll kind of find one in my mind um, a lot of them are like Peter McKinnon looks or Devin Supertramp looks um, And then another good friend of mine Tyson Henderson kind of edit some um uh, video, but then he makes them into stills, and I like how he does it. So um, I know Dawn's a really cool one. It kind of brings out some of that that ground. Again, I can't see that color exactly. I think it's a blue, but it'll kind of pop that out. It kind of makes the the buildings look a little more rustic and a little more dull, but that kind of pops the other the ground a little bit more. Um, by the way, if you want to know really good production value, I think I've said it on the vlog before. Um, anything with water. Builds that production value because stuff reflects all of it and it looks very cool. So, um, dawn or dusk is really cool. Dusk kind of has this like nice gray wash over the lens kind of vibe, and this kind of just pops it out a little more. So I'm I'm gonna keep scrolling through and kind of figure it out. All right, so I know that's not what I want to do. I know that's not what I want to do. Black and white might work actually. Now that I see it, I, that sky might need to be a little bit more uh, toned down a little bit. Um, Let's see here. I think right now. Ooh, that's kind of cool. It's a little of the opposite direction. This building I might have to tone down a little bit. It's kind of cool though. Let's see. Ooh, I kind of like that. And why not? It's probably in the end. Not good. Okay, so right now it's against uh, Skyfall, Dawn, and Dusk. Um, so now looking at Dusk and Skyfall, the, to me, in my eyes, um, again, I'm also colorblind, they're similar and also very different. The, the, the dark tones in Skyfall really are, really come out, and then the, they're, they're just kind of dull in Dusk. Dawn has this really cool look that I, I've kind of grown accustomed to and really love. Um, so I'm going to go with Dawn and then edit around it. So, um... I, the first thing I like to do is put some vignetting on. I, little, I do a little bit of a heavier vignetting on this. Um, the reason why is I really want to bring focus to the middle of the frame, and I find that's kind of like a cheap, easy way to do it. Um, clarity's fine. Um, grain, I might draw back down just a little bit just to get some more clarity out of that, that photo. Um, I'm never going to mess around with the exposure for... Uh, for for a reason here that I'm gonna show you that a little technique from filmmaking that I know that I've kind of transitioned over here into into uh, photo editing. Um, so the reason I I kind of will drop my exposure a little bit is because when I now 
um, bring some other effects in and kind of change some stuff around. It might change the exposures a little bit. So I bring it down while I edit just a little bit, maybe to 20, 20 negative 20 is pretty good. Uh, sorry, negative 0.20 um, is pretty good. And then I'll probably mess around with the contrast a little bit. Um, kind of get this looking all right. Maybe get some more blacks in there a little bit like that. Um, I don't really mess around with the temperature and the tint. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, vibrance just to kind of have a little bit more of a pop. But I don't want this building over here, um, over here to pop too much. So um, is one of the reasons why I won't be doing that. Um, I'm also going to show you a really cool shortcut I learned. Um, so let's bring that down. Let's look at this maybe. All right, so I'm kind of liking that. I always kind of try to mess around. Um, I learned this um, from a, a good friend of mine who does audio. If you don't know, I also do audio as well. Um, and I'm kind of adapted that into this photo editing stage I've been in for a little bit. Um, in audio, we call it listen to what you're twisting. So when you grab a knob and you're twisting, don't just assume you know what it does. Listen to it and kind of feel it out. I kind of do the same here with some of these sliders. Um, I'm kind of watching to what's moving. So um, I kind of feel it out and it might not be textbook right, but it might look really cool. And that that's, that's kind of what I'm going for is the look rather than the textbook correct thing. Um, and so I'm, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. So I brought it up to about negative 10. And now here comes my little scary part here. Um, I'm gonna you do some color correction here um, and um, with the sky. The sky is a little too white when I took this photo. I remember taking it. Um, I, I remember I was a little pissed off because a car hit me and got me and my camera wet. So um, wasn't so happy. So I'm just kind of doing a rough just, just for the point of this um, little uh, tutorial here so you can see my outline there all right there we go. you can see my outline um, I'm right now just kind of dropping it to see where I where kind of where I put my outline and then what I'm gonna do is I will remember how to do this anyways um, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this in and the reason why I do it really dark is so I see it um, obviously it's not gonna stay here and look like this but this is just what I do so I can see it um, while, I'm, while I'm editing. Um, so it's a little technique I do, so let me finish this and I'll get back to you here in a second. Alright, so uh, right now I kind of dropped it a little bit. You do see some streaks, but they kind of, to me it looks like it kind of blends with the sky. I might try to fill it in a little bit um, like that. But that kind of fits in. Um, I got my vignetting in, so I'm gonna go back to my editor here and just kind of double check, make sure I look, I like what it looks. I kind of might bring up some sharpening to kind of pop some stuff out a little bit. Um, and so, real quickly, just a real basic edit. Um, I know it's not perfect. I know it doesn't look that beautiful, but that's kind of the idea on how I edit. I really just kind of do the motto of listen to what you're twisting or watch what you're moving kind of thing. Um, and then that's kind of how I, I, I did, you know, stuff like, obviously that's a little off. So let me actually, now that I think about it, let me go here. This is something I learned as well, um, just before I finish wrap this up. So let me go back to this photo. Sorry, my computer's a little slow because I'm also doing the uh, time lapse or the, the screen recording thing here. So I go here, I click auto straighten, straightens it right up, get out of it, it's pretty straight. So here's something that I learned um, from, a, from a good friend of mine, um, where if I press the slash key, that's, that's this key, it's this key right here, underneath delete on a Mac, above return on a Mac, that's the line that goes like this, and the line, you know what I'm talking about. If I press that down, it shows me the original photo, and then I can let go, and once it loads, it will show me the edited version. So that's a real easy way to look back and forth. Um, I know there's a way to like side by side it, but to me it'll go back and forth. That's a little much. So I like just to A and B it just like that. And it kind of shows me the contrast. Also with me being a little colorblind, it kind of shows me what's popping out. Um, so that's how a colorblind person, me, um, edits some photos um, to make them look 
passable. Um, again, I use all the Peter McKinnon uh, plugins and then just kind of tweak and do some stuff around that from there. But that's like my base platform based off the photo that I use. And a lot of my friends um, who are not colorblind help me pick the best one for a certain application. And then I go around from there and I have a list of what the best is for what. And I kind of learned along the way what I can use on my own as well. So um, again, all that Peter McKinnon stuff's down below. I love it, I can't say enough. I am not paid to say this at all. I just love the product. So um, that's what I use. I use um, a, a base and then go from there. If you have any, uh, if you're colorblind and you do any photo editing or anything, how do you do it? I love to know, I um, love to learn. Um, but that's how I do it. I just think that's the fastest way and easiest way possible without assistance and if you don't have an editor nearby. Um, so um, find someone you trust. If, if you're colorblind, find someone you trust who can do it and just, um, have them kind of show you what to do and then save that preset or go buy presets that are similar. So thank you guys for watching this little tutorial vlog episode. Um, I'm gonna end this here. Tomorrow's gonna be slightly of a more exciting episode. Um, I'm doing a little field trip tomorrow. So um, pun intended on the field trip. You'll see. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Kids on the street, you and me, we could kick it all weekend. Baby, no sleep. Speak about whatever till the sun was in the sky. Swimming naked in the ocean while the sky was falling open. Hoping you would fuck me on the beach on my back seat. Listening to rap, so fancy. And every time you leave.